Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I. It is July of 1915, we are about to end our turn for this, uh, this particular turn, and uh, the war is going pretty well for us. We're fighting as the Entente, so as the Allies, and we're holding sort of a pretty strong line in France. In the east, we've really consolidated eastern Prussia up to the point of Königsberg. We're holding solidly in Poland, and the Austro-Hungarian army is on the verge of being overwhelmed. Their morale is down below 25%. So the war is going well. We are using diplomacy at this point to try and keep Bulgaria out of the war so that Bulgaria and the Ottomans can't attack our sort of vulnerable flank. And uh, the situation um, in the Caucasus and in the Sinai is stable. Uh, so I think things are going reasonably well. With that being said, this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. We're going to jump right back into the live stream. Uh, if you are interested in following future live streams, uh, this series in particular has completed, but if you are interested in following future live streams, click the link to my Twitch channel over there, because that's where I stream over on Twitch. And if you are interested in the game and you're looking at picking it up, but at the same time you want to you know, support the channel a little bit, there is a link in the description to a Nexus GG page that is mine. And if you purchase the game through that page, I get a small commission. Don't feel obligated to do that. Um, I'm just calling it out because it's there. Uh, one thing is it is fully authorized. I've checked with the publisher, so it's all legit. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. And uh, you guys, hope you guys enjoy. Leave your thoughts below and I'll catch you guys at the end. To upgrade their units... Yeah, the, the good point. The British aren't researching tanks yet. The French are. German national morale is down to 69%. The Austro-Hungarians are at 20. So, keep at it, boys. Lack of food imports from Romania causes hunger in Austria-Hungary. -Hung Austria Hopefully that drops their national morale a bit more. Romania joins the Entente, boosting Russian morale. Serbian morale is also boosted by having Romania in the war. The Greek Prime Minister, Eltherios Venizelos, would like to bring Greece into the war on our side, and to achieve the result, he is currently preparing to form a committee of national defense at Salonika. Supporting him is therefore strongly recommended, and his success would enable us to use Salonika either as a base for an advance into Serbia or toward Constantinople. The cost of supporting the Venizelist force in their attempt to seize power at Salonika will cost both the UK and France 100 MPPs for two turns. Failed coup could even result in Greece joining the war on the side of the Central Powers. To ensure the coup succeeds, the British and French support is required, as without it, Venezuela's plans could fail. A fail so he's going to do this either way. But if we don't support him and the coup fails, they could join Germany. Okay. Yeah, I mean, now that Romania has entered the war, her armed forces are in need of enlarging and improvement. We could assist by sending a military mission to assist her. This would help her form an extra core at a, and a recon unit of bombers, at, both at half strength. Yes, I definitely need that strength, especially since Bulgaria is probably going to join the war. Who? Apparently there's a civil war going on in Albania. That's great. Um... What's going on? What did I miss in the chat? Trench warfare level one for the British. That should be useful. Especially on the Western Front. Oh boy. Someone's trying to talk about the Holocaust in chat? That seems like maybe not the place. Damn you, German subs. 
Oh, okay. Well, good job then, Mr. Mod. I always knew there was a reason I hired you, Newhauser. Hope you enjoy the pay and benefits. Okay. Man, I'm like, this, this game, I mean, I know, like, in terms of national morale, we're absolutely kicking ass right now. But I will say it does kind of feel like we're living on a razor's edge because the second Bulgaria comes in, this whole situation gets a lot more real a lot, you know, very quickly. And the situation on the Russian front is also not great, like, in the sense that we're doing okay there. Even well, I would say, in... in oh, boy, they're going to overrun me there. Just, you can see how that one German unit that... His infantry weapon level one is just devastating for us. All right, so we lost two French corps. Although we may be able to get back at one of those German corps next turn. But yeah, it's just, it's making me real nervous that the Germans are about to just roll us. They'll attack out of debris and then finish that core off, right? Yep. So, lost two cores on the west front. Looks like we lost one core on the east front so far. Do I pay new in exposure? Yeah, that seems about right. Ottomans trying to break through in the Caucasus. Why does that show up in uh, in purple text there, Captain Failure, when you put a V dot in Sirius? Okay. Well, it could be worse. I could be naming my cores after Newhauser and then getting them all killed. Usually that's what happens, and uh, any time I name anyone after Newhauser in my uh, in my games, they die a prompt and fiery death. All right, then. Okay, so we're continuing to blockade. So we lost the... Fi I keep forgetting to deploy the French Colonials, but we lost two corps in the French Army, one Russian corps. Um, yeah. So what are the uh, Austro-Hungarians? Their morale's down to 19%. Hell yeah. Okay, pull them back there. Push these guys forward. Interesting that I didn't take it a little bit more cheaply, but... Do they auto-dig in? Is that what the entrenchment level one is? Kind of looks like they're auto-digging in. Alright, so we destroyed one German core. Sixty-four total units. German morale is starting to to drop pretty good too. They're down to sixty-seven percent. Looks like they've also fallen back a little bit, to maybe to try and shorten their lines up a bit.
Why can't they entrench? All right, they can. Okay. Mostly a defensive turn here again on the front. We did retake the city here along the channel, which I don't think we're going to hold, but at least did so temporarily. Swing that artillery in. Hopefully they can help defend in the north when the Germans attack there. Reshuffling some troops around here. The east, the western front's kind of cramped. I might actually be better off sending some of those troops elsewhere. Um, all right, Austro-Hungarian morale's at 19. How can we bring that lower? I guess one way is to try and take Belgrade. Did, what's the Bulgarian morale is up to eight or up to 80 percent? I'm not getting any ticks toward. Uh... Oh, by the way, the Germans have. That's great. Not great, but bad news, the Germans have finally shifted uh, troops to the Serbian front, by the looks of it. attacked in the other direction, but I'm happy to do that if it means getting a 1-3 to three on, on German forces. Starting to upgrade their troops out here. Alright, so we just destroyed a German unit there. Another German core destroyed. Another Austro-Hungarian core here. Primarily, I did that for morale reasons. Okay. Got the morale's down to 18%. So, I don't know if that actually does anything, but I just got our cavalry in behind the enemy lines here. Potentially, this will pull some of these troops back from Sambor and prevent an attack east. Um... 
Again, mostly a reinforcing turn. Can they not entrench in the marshes? I'm not sure if they can or not. It looks like they can. I don't know if it gives them a degraded effectiveness or not. Try and raid the enemy with our cavalry, maybe? Got him! Alright, so that... Why, that garrison didn't even lose a casualty. I'm gladly... I, I will gladly trade a garrison, by the way, for a German core. So we just destroyed another German core on the Eastern Front. The Austro-Hungarian morale is below 20%. The German morale is now below 70%. They're down to 66. Meanwhile, that loss of another unit drops them to 62 total units. MPPs for the Germans. Well, they've lost about what they gain in income again this turn. You know, presumably that would, that would make them pretty weak. I mean, the British aren't losing anything near what their income is. The French kind of are all over the place, but they're overall doing better, I think. The Russians are kind of up and down a little bit, but nowhere near as bad as, as what the Germans and Austro-Hungarians look like. So I, again, my hope is that we're bleeding them dry. The one situation where that isn't true is uh, Alright, so I mean, maybe we're better off just trying to I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what to th do with these Romanian troops, primarily because they seem to be dealing with really difficult terrain to try and push into the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We might be better off pulling them back to deal with Bulgaria. If I could push these, I think we'll push this cavalry forward. I really want to take Belgrade. I think that'll be a good result for us. Could maybe destroy a few more German units down here. Friesen and Grossvarden are key objectives that'll bring us to this rail line. We are getting pretty damn close to Budapest, by the way. I'm assuming it's not ungarrisoned, but this cavalry at Kolsi may, may drive the Germans to pull some troops back. But we've got Russian Cossacks into the heartland of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So that's good. Presumably these partisans will pull back to hold their capital at Fez. Yeah, let's push these guys forward. Okay. Um, all right, so we shot up the fifth core for the Germans whose readiness is shot. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Um, Guys, forward. 
Again, I just I want to try and get in. If we can take Budapest, if we can just do a little bit more, I feel like we'll knock the Austro-Hungarians out of the war. At this point, though, I'm not sure how big of a difference, like, unless the Germans evacuate Austria-Hungary, it's 22 units. It's I guess it's a sizable number of units that'll pull out. Also, it'll if the Germans try to hold Austria-Hungary, it'll way overextend them. I'm advancing here mainly to protect this unit, the second Caucasus Mountain Corps. So the Russian fleet is safe, I think. The British, meanwhile, keep upgrading your ASW tech, especially with your destroyers. We're gonna go on a campaign against the subs, wherever they may be located. I'm guessing they're somewhere along this line here. Destroyers in so we can upgrade those guys. We'll throw these cruisers on the on the blockade line. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Click the wrong hex. Can't undo it either. There we go. Okay, so West Front's done. Is there anything we can? All right, so we've got some new units. We've got some British subs, some British fighters, the French colonials. Can I deploy those anywhere other than France? No. All right, well, let's deploy them to Marseille. I think we're going to use them in the med. French destroyer here and a seaplane tender. Meanwhile, research. France, industrial technology. Um, I, I feel like the economy is where it's at, so let's keep dumping money there. The British are real close to spying logistics, production technology, and industrial, but we're going to spend some on command and control. The infantry weapon, I wish it was coming faster. It's so slow. 44%, 42%. The Russians are the closest at 73%. Jeepers. Jeepers, creepers! All right. Let's end the turn and move forward to September. We're almost into our second winter of the war. Looks like the German forts just got upgraded, so I'm guessing they just got another trench technology? Looks like they're all fortifications everywhere they have trenches, so they must be way ahead of us on some of the research. Is Germany just dumping all of its money into research and development? I mean, they're sure getting new units, so I don't think that's possibly the case, but. Okay, they're going to move their cavalry out of there. God, that's going to make trying to overrun the German troops in the east so much more difficult. I 
I mean, it's not no. I don't think anyone can say I'm not investing in R and D. Like we're definitely investing. Oh shit. Are the Germans trying to break the blockade? That's a German armored cruiser. Here they come, boys. They're trying to break the blockade. And they're succeeding to an extent. Now these are mostly all light forces. The interesting thing is if we can deal a serious blow to them at sea, that might be a crippling national morale loss. Like, warships are worth a lot in this game. They're definitely attacking that British unit there. Look at all that artillery they're pounding that unit with. All right, so they reinforced Belgrade. They're kick-ass. Why didn't... They're attacking on a two-hex front. Interesting. A lot of defensive artillery for us. That's definitely helping us in these attacks. We're losing casualties, but so are the Germans who are attacking. Uh, Alright, so they're going to try and destroy that cavalry unit. They'll probably succeed. Well, I would assume they'd swing the core down from Gorlis to finish him off. <laughs> They'll bust out the Stug 44s in 1916. <laughs> hey, Happy Duck V2, thanks for the follow. What are the air units for? You can use air units to bomb. You can use them to recon. It makes it easier to attack fixed fortifications. Like, the real I ideal way you do it is you take recon units, recon an enemy hex, then you bombard it with artillery, then you attack it with either our tanks or infantry. Um, that's kind of the, the sort of textbook way, I think, to attack in this game. German action on the Northern Blockade Line interrupts the flow of neutral merchant shipping destined for Germany. Well, that feels like that would be not what you intended, Germany. All right, so this, things are shaping up this turn for a massive naval battle. We lost two light cruisers in the north. Um, all right, we got a torpedo boat coming on online. 66 national morale. So you can see here, I don't know that I can reach them. Well, maybe I can. Not all of them, though. Damn. Damn it. All right. All right. That was useful recon. So our dreadnought here. So we know there's there may be another unit here. All right, so we're detecting enemy sub. That's fine. Um, so there appears to be the Durflinger. So this is not the full German fleet. There's the Durflinger battlecruiser, the armored cruiser First Bismarck, the battleship Rhineland, and another Dreadnought. My fleet back here in Scotland can't reach them all. Should probably sweep out ahead of us with some other light forces just to make sure we're not running into a trap down here. Okay. So there's nothing down there. So what can reach them? I can reach the furthest. Okay. All right, let's send the Orion up against whatever this is. OK. 
Okay, so we sank one German capital ship. Can my battle cruiser get up there? It can. I guess I'd rather have my... Uh, let's do this. Alright, so we finished off that German armored cruiser, a 500 national morale bonus. Invincible will finish off that German Dreadnought, 750 national morale bonus. And so the Durflinger is the one remaining enemy capital ship up here. Their subs could do some damage to us. That's the other thing we got to sort of keep in mind. The Lion is not in great shape, so I don't really want to send her forward to engage. She'd probably just die, even though she could get there. How much can we hurt the Durfling with our... Just throw a bunch of light cruisers at him and wear him down, maybe? Maybe send the line after her now? Alright, so their subs may finish the line off. Can the destroyer finish it off? Got him! 550 national morale bonus. Nice. Okay, so... Ideally, we'll have our destroyers come down here and attack this German sub. Question is war whether more of the German fleet will come after us. I do think I've got a good tripwire down here with a couple of light cruisers and destroyers that should prevent them from rushing further. Let's replace that northern blockade line. So the entire blockade line is filled back up with the exception of the one hex the Germans are on. But the distant blockade is totally lifted at the moment. I'll throw a pre-dreadnought battleship up there just for good measure. Meanwhile, we do have a new motor torpedo boat, which has arrived. Also, with those losses, the German national morale probably is going to take a hit. Down to 62%. Take a look at the reports. National morale, you can see the Germans went down a little bit. Not dramatically, actually, but their MVP cost. I mean, they're probably not going to try and replace their battleships, so this may be a little bit of a fake loss versus income. I would think the British national morale took a nice little bonus there, though. Although their casualties obviously substantially exceeded their uh, income, again, because of the, the warship casualties there. Still, I would say destroying four enemy capital ships is a, is a pretty damn good day. If we go to naval, the German fleet is at 31, so it's still pretty damn strong. I have to assume it skews heavy on the subs. Austro-Hungarian morale is down to 17%. Diplomacy, where's... Bulgaria's still at 80, holding at 80. Alright, 
these guys. Give me a two to four every day. All right, so we just destroyed another German core there. All right, what does that bring their strength at? They're at 61. Another core of infantry destroyed. Okay, so the Western Front is, is, I think, in good shape. Even as the Germans upgrade their, their infantry tech, we're still doing okay on the Western Front. Another new army arrives at Portsmouth, throw them on transports, get them ashore. Interesting. Not sure my aircraft can do a whole lot against them. Surprised the partisans aren't. What are their supplies down to three? Maybe they'll just eventually starve out. In any event, um, okay, that looks good. Can we take Belgrade this turn? Or I don't know. Maybe do something against some of these troops down here. All goddamn German troops on the Eastern Front now, pretty much. All right, pull that garrison back. They they did their job. can't do anything against these guys at Debrisen, can I? Alright, so we drove that unit back. Their morale's still sitting at 16. If there are any units... Okay, so maybe... Is it worth it, do we think? Bringing our dreadnoughts up to try and fight them? I mean, they might sink several of our ships, but I gotta think the loss to them would be worse than us. Although, great, I can't even reach them with all my ships. Of course, then we just get driven back into port, and at that point, what's the point of that? Get my light ships up there to 
defend, I suppose, from from Austro-Hungarian subs. Do we hurt the morale at all? At least by inflicting a few casualties on them? We did! We dropped it to 15. Okay. I really need to cross the river and take that city. Let's reinforce those guys. Right, we'll reinforce everybody with the intent of launching an assault on Belgrade next turn. All right, we'll get, I think, at least a turn notice. Mainly attacking here to try and turn the enemy out of their positions. Can we try and ride down the rail line here toward... That's probably just going to get us killed, right? God, I don't want to attack Premzel head on. We'll just spend this turn reinforcing across the front. Alright, so almost everybody on this eastern front is at full strength. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Strategic Command World War I, a game out by Fury Software and, the, and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. Uh, our allied Let's Play continues to go pretty well, but we'll pick things up next time as we move into the fall of 1915. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.